Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the webinar. We're going to be talking about using the ASPEC standards with the ACDC toolkit, and we'll be looking a bit at BSpec, DSpec, and OSpec. So thank you very much for attending. There's a few things that about some standards in general. We'll talk about some of the free tools that we are working on. And then we'll go and get a little bit more in the weeds on how do you deal with multiple configurations, have a look at a bit of data creation, some of the setup and configuration issues that goes together with the more configurations. And I'll, I'll explain that in a little bit. And then we'll talk a little bit about the portal and some of the error messages, meanings, and those type of things that we're going to do. And then we'll also be introducing some of the new rules uh, and check that them in system with the new version coming out that we'll be uh, looking at. So firstly, ACDC has been built and not as a specific standard configuration. It has been built to be configurable that you can build anything with it. So you can use ADAC with it. You can use ASPEC with it. There's uh, REF11, there's FMQ Rock. In the US, we've got the national CAD standard. In the national, there's the US national with a universal data model that we've configured. And so there's a whole lot of different layers and the layer naming conventions, etc. We tie all of these type of things together. So ACDC and then the way that the portal works is per definition, totally configurable system. So some organizations have also used their own standards. So for example, you look at bow and water, use the ACDC mechanism. It's exactly the same tools, but their configuration might is, is then different. So they're not a spec, but it's still the same mechanism, how you can submit data to the portal. And there's a menu that you can actually use to capture the data and all of that type of things as well in that process. So ASPIC V5 is out so earlier this week, I think Monday or Tuesday came out. And so there will be a few implications of that. So one of the things, the class names will change. So that means that one of the issues with ASPIC version 3 was there was, for example, pipes. This asset class called pipe in B spec. There is asset class called pipes in sewer spec as well. So that there's then the same type of asset class in different specifications. So now you don't know which one to talk about. So the asset class names has changed, and that's then basically putting the spec in type in front of it. So there will be D pipes and S pipes, etc. So that there's no duplication then happening in there. That means that the shape file names will change, etc. So on our side, that is a configuration change. That also means the layer names will change. So, for example, what we've done in the layer names is call them DSpec and then new and then the actual asset class name. So, we'll change that then to conform to the new naming convention. So, that's the now that was extended in there. One of the things that when we talk about the new as well as between that you can handle new assets versus existing assets versus abandoned assets. We'll work with that. So there will be a few new blocks with the new asset classes that have been introduced. So that will do. And then the lookup values in quite a few tables has changed. So that's an update. And that means then there will be an updated menu to work with those changes that we will look at now. I'll come back to those slides in a moment. So what we're talking about is the tools that we offer with ACDC. When you say, I've got a toolkit and I want to work on AutoCAD or Bricks CAD, so one of the CAD environments that you can work with. So we give you an AutoCAD template, works with AutoCAD and uh, Bricks CAD, so it's a DWG, and you will also have a DWD. So I'll show you a little bit, one or two things on there, how you can actually deal with some of the configurations there. There's then a CAD menu. Now, typically the ASPEC V3 would then work on something like AutoCAD LT, and the attribute that is then on the Autodesk App Store or the Bricks CAD or Bricks' App Store, so other of those 
set of files. There's also then, from a GIS perspective, we make a set of empty shape files available that basically has the configuration in there that you can can work now. And that's then available for all the standards, WSPEC, SPEC, DSPEC, RSPEC, OSPEC, now, we just received the final version, so we're busy with the update process, and in the not-too-distant future, there will be the update of the template. That's then where we will get into some of these. Here's an example of a report that I pulled out of the system. So what you have is then there's a number of councils. So we've got Dandenong, Bendigo, Wangaratta, Colibad Water, Melton City Council. And then we've got a set of developers. So if I go and look at Beveridge Williams, submit to Wangaratta, and they submit to Melton, and they submit to Greater Bendigo. So different civil engineers talk to different councils and submit submit data to different uh, organizations and councils, etc. Now, that thing brings two problems to say. So basically what we're saying is, as a design engineering company, you need to work with different councils. Now, that is then on the portal itself, but you have got a process. So how do I then submit data to an organization that then doesn't subscribe to the portal? I want one process. I don't want two different processes there as well. But now there's a new version of the standard. Now, from the council perspective, there's a different problem. And that to accept the new version of the standard, it's not just, okay, there's a new version of the standard uh, out today. So from tomorrow, we're going to accept the new data because that data has got a specific workflow. It's got to go into a validation process. And then it typically goes to a staging environment. So the engineers then has to look at some of the new information. And then there's processes in the background that you then have to run through to convert the data. So there's now new asset classes. So what are you going to do with those asset classes? Some of the attribute names may have changed. Some of the lookup tables and lookup values or codeless, et cetera, is strange. So there is a process that you would need to do to consume that information. And now different organizations, so there's different upgrade cycles. So it's not just pick a switch and here's a new version of the standard that everybody can accept that standard. So that's then a few problems so that different organizations will take the new version of ASPEC at different times. What's the impact then on the development community? So now I've got a, a toolkit that I can work with. How am I going to work with different organizations to have the, the different timelines on that? There's a second aspect to that in that from organizational point of view, the standard is important, but some organizations require less information. So they say, uh, I expect we don't probably don't need all of the information, so I just need less of that. So there may be a slightly different version of the standard that they will have. So basically, the customers will go live at different validation set or the councils and utilities. The next aspect is there's a subdivision that we're busy with, and now there's a new version of the standard. We're about 60% through with the drawing. Is this going to go with the new version of the standard or the old version of the standard? So part of what we do with a portal is enable that process for a council to say, all right, what we have is what we call a validation set. Typically, they will be on a validation set that is configured to a spec version 3, and there will then be a new version to, of a spec version 5. When they create a project, they can go and say, this project is validated against this version of the standard, so version 3 or version 5. So if they can go back to an existing project and assign the version 5 to it, or they can say up to a certain period, we're going to accept the old version of the standard. Or they could say for all existing projects, if it has been created and it is on version 3, we're going to accept version 3, but all new projects going into the future will be version 5. So depending on how you configure the portal, 
people, they can totally control and manage that process in terms of the decision-making process then to say, when do we accept the new version of the standard or not? And that is then totally up to the council or the utility to make that decision. And part of that is then part of the communication process to say, okay, from what stage, from what date will we accept the new standard? All right, so we've had a quick look at the tools for the standard. So we're now going to dig a little bit more into the detail. So how am I going to deal with multiple configurations? So if we look at then, once again, with the slide, there's the CAD templates and the menus. So we're going to start off by looking at the menus. So you may have different menus for different customers. Here's an example for the ASPEC version 3 attributor. Now, in AutoCAD or in BricsCAD, you can just go and do a menu load and go and load the menu that's supplied for you. But you may have different menus for different. So, for example, Coliban Water. So, the standard one has got all the buildings, drainage, open space, road, sewer, water, etc. Coliban Water just has got the sewer and water. Wangaratta has got building drains, open space and road, but they've got um, less attributes than in there. So Wangaratta may then have, uh, or then have got a different version of the menu. Now these menus can totally coexist next to each other. They're not going to interfere with each other. And they will all work with each other well. So what we do is we call the attribute application and then it will work within that configuration. So the menu will call the attribute. Now, the way that Autodesk and BricsCAD have done the attribute, it is called, it's an application, but it works it's installed once on an application, but it will work with any of your Autodesk verticals, both in version and in product. So if I've got a, a standard AutoCAD and a Max 3D and a Civil 3D installed, and I have a 2021 version of AutoCAD and a 2024 version of Civil 3D, Attributor will work on all of those with the same configurations. One configuration across product and across the versions. Breach cat slightly different. There may be an update required. So what we do is just then do an update on the App Store to tie that to the latest version of the application. On the BreezeCAD side, on the Autodesk side, it's a small configuration. You say, yes, it is compatible with the new version. So when 2025 comes out, it will just be a small update and it will then work with those products as well. So in terms of a menu, we supply the council with a menu as part of their process, and they will then supply that menu to you as part of the documentation. So if there's a new document coming in, it will notify you through the normal portal notification process to say there's a new toolkit available that you can then just download from the portal and install on the application. So you can have different menus. Now, depending on the time, I may go into a little bit more on the menus and look at what you can actually do with some of the menus. Here's another example. So that's then on bar and water. So they are not a spec. But it's the same principle. There's the menu. They've got potable water, recycled water, sewer. So it's a slightly different naming convention, but it's exactly the same mechanism that they have. They also supply some toolbars to help with the capture of that uh, data. The next thing is how do I deal with multiple configurations? So I can now submit data, let's say for Wangaratta as well as for Bendigo has also got a menu and maybe if we look at Casey and Dandenong, they use 100% the stock standard. So how I'm going to deal with, with those templates. So firstly, the AutoCAD DWG or DWT, you can customize that and I encourage you to customize that to meet your requirements. Now, there's a few things that you cannot change. Those are the layer names because the layer names is part of the configuration. The block names and the block attributes names you cannot change. So if you need to keep those the same, don't touch those. But what can you change? The layer color. So what we've got is we've got in your drawing template, here's all the layers and all the categories, we've given them the same color. 
But when you're working within DSpec to have every single one color isn't very uh, user-friendly. You can change those colors to whatever you want to be. You can also do that drawing template. And if you're saying, I'm going to be working with these big, strip out all the other layers and all the other blocks that you're not working with, and then make the drawing templates for you just with D-spec and one for R-spec and one for O-spec, et cetera. So feel totally free to go and do that to reduce the number of layers, et cetera, that you're working. Line styles, what we do is line styles can cause a few funny things so what we actually do is if you submit a drawing for us with a line style well or for that matter without a line style we actually take the line and we convert it to a standard straight line because there's sometimes if there's blocks that snap to a midpoint and there's a gap in there programmatically it may cause a problem so in the portal we change it to a solid and then after we finish the validation, we return it to its original state. So it's not going to change your line styles. We remember exactly what it is. And so that's what we do. So you're totally free to do your own line style. In terms of the block configuration, the block name need to be the same. But if you want to configure the block to have a different geometry type, you're totally free to do that. If you want to put in for branding purposes the block geometries to display different sizes and different scales, you can do that. So any of those fancy stuff in the block editor, you can totally go use that. The next one is then the block attribute manager with a very imaginative name called Batman. You can then in the block attribute manager. So here I've used the DSpec bits. These moving the attributes up and down, you can totally do that. Now, what that will do is in the attribute, the attribute to look at the order of the attributes in the block. And if you move these attributes up and down, that will fit in the order of the stuff that you are working with. It will display correctly in the attributor. The attributor will read information in the block. If you go into the edit, there's the visibility, there's the default value, there's the prompt for the visibility. What that would do is, so if I go into this one, we can go and say, well, here's some of these attributes that is displayed. You can totally decide which attributes do you want to display. So you can go and turn on attributes if you want to see what's going on, with this, what's the main attributes. If I lose a, a drawing, can I see what's going on? So you're totally free to go turn on any of the attributes that you may want to use. The prompt is we actually read that from the ASPEC standard, and that's what we give to you in that prompt. If you want to choose that prompt to something else, you're totally free to do that. The next thing is then the default value. You can go into the block and add a default value to anything that you may want. What we're doing in the configuration tools of ACDC is actually give you the ability to specify a default value. So with ACDC 5, you can then specify that. But if you say for a specific project that I'm working with, a year step, you know, it's typically... PVC 100 mole, and that's going to be 80% of the acid. So fill full those values in that you don't have to go and modify different things. So you don't be free to go and change this within the block, and that's not going to affect anything that you are doing. The next bit is dealing with multiple configuration templates. If you go into your AutoCAD and you say file new, this thing typically in your C users, whatever your username is, app data, local, Autodesk, then whichever version. So in this case, I've used Civil 3D 2024, but it, you know, it could be any of the applications. In there, there's in the MU, so that's the language version under template. So what I've been typically recommend, what you do is go and create a subdirectory under that application and go and copy your drawing templates in there. So for example, here what I have is a water template, RSpec V3, a bar and water template, ASpec for Wangaratta, and there's the standard ASpec one 
drawing template that we've got there. There's one for Auckland. You can have a different set of these drawing templates. So what you can then do also, if you've stripped out your own, so to say, okay, I've got a D spec and an R spec and a W spec and an S spec and an O spec and a B spec as all different menus. So basically you take the current one, you go and remove the layers that you don't want out of there. That's, let's say, only the D spec layers in there. And you've then changed the colors for all of that. If I then go and you put it in here and I say far new, that's then easy to do. If there's a new version of AutoCAD or BricsCAD coming out, what you do is you just go and copy that directory and go and place it into the Civil 3D 2025 temp directory in there. Uh, just go and copy and paste it in there and you're ready to go for the new version. You don't have to run around to go and find different configurations, etc. So, yeah, if there's any questions or any suggestions on you know, how people are doing it, that would also be helpful. So basically what we've got in the drawing is, so we've got all of the ASPEC layers in the CAD template. So what we've done is we've taken the full ASPEC document and coded everything in our AutoCAD drawing template. And so all the layers, et cetera, conform to what the specification would do. All the attributes, et cetera, is in there. The descriptions we put into the blocks. But then there's also within the attribute, uh, the information that will go in there. So that's the .atr or the .ext files that you can then work with. So the attribute gives you the ASPEC drop-down in the CAD. So basically what we've gone from is where you then have a spreadsheet where you've got to go and read what is this information, et cetera. It's all encoded in the ASPEC template that you can work with between the attribute configuration. We also then give you the menu where you can then go and say, here's my information and I can go and capture that. We also then give you that empty shape file with the correct column names, et cetera, that you can work with. Now, within the shape files, when you submit shape files to the portal, there's one or two things that we've seen over time where if you've got a graphics-only object, then certain products, what they would do is, for example, give you a shape file and a DPF file, which is a database file from the 1990s, a DBase 3 file type. But if it's empty, then it doesn't conform to the specifications and some of the tools won't import it, etc. So we just have to be careful with that. Now, with the new version of ASPIC, there will be no graphics-only objects because there's a area of work identifier that then has to go on all assets. So all assets will have, or all entities in, in a drawing or on a submission will have attributes that we are working with. So basically what you then do is, in Attributor, we then give you the tool to actually go and draw information to say, okay, now, that's not how you're going to work from a survey. So typically what you do is get is the information coming from the from the survey. So your line work, et cetera, would come from that. We do give you the ability to go and draw the line work, et cetera. Now, the next thing that we do is when you're actually going to capture the data, we then have the encoding where you can then go and capture all of the data. And that's the data. The type, so the little asterisk tells you whether it's mandatory or not. Now, some of the mandatory in the new standard will also change because basically everything was mandatory. And even if you say, I don't know, you know, the minus 9999, you know, that's not really mandatory. If you say you must give a value and different things, so some of those things change in the standard as well, that you can then easily just go and capture that information. Part of that where you can actually fill in one and then go and copy that to the other locations that you are working with. Now, one of the things that we are looking in is we can actually do some tools to speed up that process as well. And if you're interested in that type of functionality, let us know and we can have a talk about that type of extending the functionality in there.
creating the data directly in ASPEC. So here's all the shape files. So that's all the empty shape files, et cetera. So you can see here's all the various files that will make all of that. And you can, in for example, in Q, just go and set up all of the information for that. Around the portal, in terms of some of the extended functionality, so multiple format submissions, so you can submit AutoCAD or BricsCAD drawings, so any version that's out there in the market. You can also do shape files as well as MITMIF files from tomorrow that you'll be able to submit MITMIF files as well. It's taken a while to get all of that sorted, but yeah, yeah, we're about to go live with that shortly. The other type of things that you can also do is when you submit on the portal, so you're working with a specific project. So things like your CCTV footage can also be submitted to the portal under the project documentation section. So if that's then easier way for you to actually get that information to council and the council does not currently do that, uh, just speak to them or speak to us and we can just set that up that you can, for example, submit your CCTV or other documentation on the portal against a project as well. So things like inspection plans, traffic management plans, stakeholders reports, etc. all of that can be submitted to the portal as well. And we've also expanded the notification emails on there and we'll be adding a bit more customization to that as well. So there's a process then who can be notified when it passed validation and you do the ready for review. So that's one of the things when you've passed the validation and the notification mechanism is enabled. Uh, you can then just go and say ready for review and that will then notify the council or utility that. I have submitted this drawing, it's past validation, but I am now happy with that. Can you please go and check that? So they will then receive an email to say this drawing has the past validation and you as the developer are happy with that. They will then go and look at the data itself from an engineering perspective, etc. So there may still be things that is in the standard and it's past that, but there may be some other reasons why it fails. So they may go and reject a drawing, one accept that or accept the drawing. In either case, you will then get a notification to say it's been rejected and accepted. Now, part of that is also then configuration. So who receive that is if all the administrators in the developer organization or the survey organization, or is it the user that's actually submitted the drawing? So all of that is part in the configuration. When you pass validation, you can also then go and convert the data to shape or to a MIF file, for example, or a drawing. So that's one of the things with the portal. Let's say you use Attributor to capture data for ASPEC, but there's now one other ASPEC organization or council that doesn't subscribe to the portal. You can actually submit against your own project and it will do the conversion to shape file or to MIF file, and you can then submit that to the council organization as well. So come and talk to us about that process. So on the portal front page, there's a link that you can go and click, and you can ask us about that process so we can enable that for you, that you can have one process we can work with multiple organizations. The on-premise desktop that we have, that's then for the councils or utilities thing typically, and what that will do is doing a joint for the file validation and conversion and uh, working with the validation rules, et cetera. And from there, populate then also your corporate asset management system, GIS, et cetera. So some of the things that we are then doing is then we go and specify this is the layer name and on what is the block name that it is and go and configure all the attributes, etc. according to OSPEC. So that's our configuration for that. For the block attributes, uh, one of the things there we say what is mandatory and that will give you the little asterisk in attribute menu, etc. Uh, all of that uh, will work. What is the data type where that is going to, if there's any code list, loop cables, et cetera, that you can go specify. And so that's part of that configuration. 
So in there is mandatory or not? What is the data type? The value must be in a range or it must be exist in a predefined list, etc. that you can work with. Now there's some extended rules for geometries. One of those is then, for example, a linear branch. So if you've got a property connection and you've got a pipe, then typically what happens is the rule that you can go and specify that to say a property connection must be connected to a pipe. But that's now where this new comes in. So for example, one of the things that can happen is there's a subdivision that happens and in stage one you put in a pipe but then the property connection going to that pipe will only come later so now you are submitting a new drawing but you can't put in the old pipe because you've already submitted that to council that's already in the asset management system if you submit that pipe again now you're getting duplication that causes all sorts of problems so typically what we do there is you then say, okay, I've got a D-spec and call that existing pipe. So you put that then on the existing layer. The portal will not pick that up as a new pipe and validate that as a new pipe. You just need the geometry there. It doesn't need any of the attributes, etc. So just the, basically the pipe geometry on the existing layer. And then in the configuration, what we do is then to say a new property connection can also go to an existing pipe. And that will then do that validation to make sure, well, is there actually a pipe or is this property connection hanging in air? The other type of thing that we are doing is then snapping. So what this would do is to say, well, a pit must be snapped to a pipe. So that is that uh, pit block, for example, or uh, if I've got, uh, now there's a, a, a few of those. So you can see there's a snap to nearest end. So what we do is we specify tolerance and then to say if this actual block is within a certain distance, when they do the conversion, it will actually snap it to that to make sure that it, it is the actual same coordinate. So in terms of drawing, if it was slightly off, will go and fix it for them. The other one is then where it is, for example, a snap and break. Now, what that would be is, for example, if we look at the water and we'll get to the water in the next one is, for example, if I've got a valve, now I've got a long pipe that goes from a junction and runs through a valve and so on, but the diameter, material, and all of that stuff is exactly the same. What the system can do is then go and break it at that valve. So you, you only put in the attribute once, but, and it will then distribute all of those attributes across the two or three new assets that will happen if it breaks in based on those rules. So that's then typically something that the utility or the council will set up on how that works. Now, in terms of drainage and sewer, you're not going to break any of the entities because you need all the invert elevations and then you're going to end up with the wrong inverts. So that's then typically not used on the DSPEC side. The next type of things that we're doing in the validation is compound validation. Now, with ACDC5, what you may notice is if there's a validation that is happening, you may notice a direction arrow appear. So that's one of the things that the system will check for directionality. So, for example, if we look at drainage or sewer, that it must start at the higher level and then go on. And we will then actually mark up all the pipe directions for you. So you can then visually easily see if that is then something. So that is something that the utility will turn on to say there is a new direction in there. So some of the attribute checks that can be do is to say a single character. So the last character must be a specific value. For the project number, character one and two must be and whatever. So if it's a drainage project, for example, it must have, have a specific naming convention in there. You'll be able to do those type of substring checks. You can also do a multi-value check. So that's one of the things then if we say, if you've got a pipe material, so in a spec, for example, you can say, yes, 20 different pipe materials. But in actual practice, if you say, yes, a PVC pipe, 
but there may be 20 different diameters, but only a certain number of those diameters are valid for uh, this material. A blue brute, or let's say the, the type secondary supply, the diameter must be bigger than a certain amount or smaller than a certain value. And a primary, you're not going to have a 100 mole primary supply pipe, etc. So you may have any one attribute comparing you to another, and you can then go and specify those rules as well. So that is then some information that may be over and above of what is in A-spec. It goes more into some of the engineering checks as well that is there, but it's still a valid check that may happen. One of the other things that then go along with that is we introduce the concept of a warning. So a warning will tell you there's a problem. In the portal, it will say, okay, this drawing has passed, but there's warnings. So that is the type of thing I used to say, well, you can check the upstream inbuilt elevation must be higher than the downstream inbuilt elevation. But there's a few rare occurrences where it is actually valid. So if you receive a warning in the portal, that's something you need to go check and verify as a developer. From a customer perspective, if there's a warning on this on the drawing, you can go and check what those warnings are and decide if you want to accept that or not. So some of the other compound spatial checks, so one of the things, for example, in ASPEC is you've got a road surface area, but there must be a road center line inside that, so we can go and check that as well. So playground equipment must be contained within a park that we can check as well. How many pipes are connected to a node? So, for example, in cap, you're not going to have an in cap in the middle of a pipe. Or how many manholes? So, for example, there must be more than one pipe connected to a manhole, for example. How many nodes can be connected to a pipe? So, for a valve, you're not going to have a valve in thin air. So, a valve must have a minimum of one, maximum of two. You're not going to have four pipes connected about those type of rules that you can do. Spatial and attributes. So the diameter of a fitting must match the diameter of a pipe. So you can actually go and look at one entity, compare it to another entity and do the connected entity and then do that validation as well. Spatial attribute checks, so related attribute check, attribute link checks, etc. Well, that would do so. If I look at that here, you've got your downstream invert elevation of this pipe must be higher than the upstream invert elevation of this one. So you go and do those type of checks as well. Now the other one, your driveway polygon may not be within seven meters of a roundabout polygon. So that's one of the other type of checks that we've added in there. Now, any of the errors that you have, so what we do is even if you submit the shape file, uh, we do give you then error file as well as the drawing that you can then go and so the error markers that you can then have a look at. Typically that you will have must missing mandatory value for tag on that. So we've expanded the error messages quite a bit um, to, to make it a bit easier to understand, et cetera. Just then, if we look a little bit in terms of DSPEC, one of the things, for example, that we find your property connections, especially if it is the property connections of a drainage pipe that's a mid-block, some of those property connections are vertical. So it may be a half a meter property connection in 3D, but what happens then is to say, okay, I've now drawn this in 3D, but now we flatten it to go to a 2D object. Now you end up with a zero length pipe. So in 3D or in a 2D space, that then is a point and that's not a line and it must be a line entity. And one of the things then, can I actually go and find that property connection? So if it is so small that it's you know, point 0.1 of a millimeter is a location, but then you're also talking about a diameter of the thing that's uh, much bigger than that. So to give it a certain minimum length for the council and then, you know, the, the, uh, the people from the council can submit on that. But the important thing on that is to say, can I actually, when I've now converted this to my GIS and asset management, can I find that what is the actual length from that on a 3D space and not only in a 2D space on there? So the length calculation is then quite important, or the length value that's being supplied is actually quite important. 
I just want to cover in OSPEC. Now, one of the things that within OSPEC, capturing all of that information is one of the things that you typically find is this, for example, I may have a park and I've sell a polygon with a hole. It's not that easy to do in normal AutoCAD lightweight poly lines. So within AutoCAD maps, a part of your AutoCAD subscription is what they call AutoCAD sets. So you can, in your normal AutoCAD, you can actually download and install AutoCAD map. In there, it's got the concept of multi-polygon, so you can actually then properly display that. Now, within the portal, if you submit a shapefile, we actually convert that to an in-polygon to a multi-polygon, and you can then work with it. And one of the things as well, we support Arc, so especially in public open space, you find quite a lot of Arcs being used. Now, Shapefiles does not support Arc, so uh, it will densify all of that in there. And you've got all of the classes in the configuration, the same with the respect. So, okay, I think we've run out of time. So, have we got any questions? Jason? Okay. Yeah, I just want to check yeah, what other specs do you support? Do you support IPWEA? The IPWEA is ADAP. We've got a configuration for that, yes. Okay. And I assume that you can blend like those, either one of those with any existing site specific coding and so forth. Correct, yes. That's yeah. that's why I want settings with build a totally configurable system. So you can mm. actually uh, take this and take use this config and I can yeah. then go say, uh, so in DSpec, I may have, for example, a code list and there's 50 values in that. But for you as an organization, only five of those are valid. Or the coding that you use is actually totally different. So instead of then doing it slightly different, you can actually do your own code list. And that's then part of what we do is we make a configuration available for you to your development community and to say, yes, our version of ADAC or ASPEC with any of the other versions. Johan? Yes. Donald from Dandino. It's a quick question. So yes, uh, whenever we decide to go ahead with the new version of the specs, is it possible for us to actually use the different templates for the different versions for different developers? Yes, sir. Right. Thank you. Yeah. So that's just basically in terms of the configuration on the portal. Yeah, when, when you want to go and with the projects, etc., it's it's really, are you going to say all our existing projects stay on the old one or do you want the old projects to go on? Or you can de decide that per developer. So if the de this developer has totally switched over to, to the new version, you can make their projects on the new version. But let's say some of the smaller ones haven't done that yet. And so you can keep them on the old one. So it's totally up to you how you want to manage that. Okay. Any more questions? There's another one, Johan. Can this tool check ASPEC submission in mid MIF format from Saif Mahmoud? From tomorrow, yes. So just check. We'll, we'll be doing a portal update tonight. And if all goes well, from tomorrow, you will be able to submit mid -MIF. Awesome. Thank you very much. Thank you for your attention and see you in the next webinar.